Is there a moment? So if I am a first time investor at JWB, I'm about to, I, I would love to take this from the perspective of I'm about to invest with JWB. Um, and I would love to hear either from Greg and Al uh, or Al first, um, what do I need to think about this stuff before purchasing this property? Or do I need to think about this stuff once it's under contract, once it's there, right? Cause I hear a lot of questions like, should I start with an LLC? Does that, does that play into this? You know, I'll kind of, I'll kind of jump in there. Um, this isn't something you have to have figured out immediately, right? It's not something you have to have figured out before you start to put the property under contract, right? Um, there are some things that you really kind of need to understand at a high level. Uh, but, but some of the things that are going to protect you the most, like an LLC are going to make it harder for you to acquire the property or harder to get financing. So it's not a, it's not something that you have to do immediately, right? It's more of a comprehensive plan with an expert like Al and with our team and with the experts that we have on the financing side and on the insurance side. And it's, and that's not a one size fits all plan for everybody. It's based on, you know, your level of uh, risk that you are willing to take on as well. So um, it's a, it's kind of a team approach and it's something that we work through during the time that we onboard a client, when we build the buying plan with the client, when we close on the client, on the properties with the client, that's one necessary step. And then that, that might be when we take that next step to get somebody like Al um, involved and, and setting up that asset protection the way we want. Um, or for other clients, we may decide that that's not necessary today. That might be a necessary thing when they reach three properties or 10 properties. So I think the biggest answer is uh, it's a comprehensive effort and um, you have to be one phone call away from experts on all sides of it to put the right plan together for you. I agree with Greg. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that it's not something that everyone's going to do up front or later on in life, or maybe they never do it at all. It, it can't stop you from buying real estate. It can't stop you from doing the things that are going to have passive income for you. You, you, you learn it, you go as go with the flow, right? And so you can buy the real estate, then you can eventually quit claim it into your LLC. You can eventually do a trust or revocable trust. And what ends up happening is somebody just may buy the real estate. They never thought about any of this estate planning stuff, the trust stuff. Then they're going to a little house party during Christmas, Thanksgiving, whatever it is. And somebody's mentioning it and they never thought about that before. The light bulb goes on and they're like, wait a second, we own all this property. We maintain all of this personal liability too with it being in our name and if we have tenants in that property and somebody you know slips falls and sues and they have a collectible position against all our property we're thinking wait a second we don't want that to happen so we're gonna start doing LLCs and people are not thinking about that right away Pablo we, I had somebody call me about a year ago I remember this because of that question she said I'm about to purchase real estate should I wait to do the LLC uh, at, uh, before or should I just buy the real estate and then quit claim it? And I was like, you got to live your life and, and, and make the deal happen. So um, everybody's different. Everybody's just got the different knowledge base whenever you get to it. We have clients in the law firm that never take care of this stuff until they're 95. I've seen it. And, 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 and they do it. They, they want to get it done and it helps protect them. Okay. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. So I'm, am I hearing as long as you handle this stuff before you pass away, you're good, <laughs> right? Kind of, right? Kind of, right? The yeah. asterisk. Um, yeah. you, because where I'm kind of going with it is that properly drafted items can avoid court administration. So here's a really good example. There was a really well-known uh, drafting estate planning lawyer in town and uh, I made note of it too. And we ended up getting the case to do the trust administration. Something was messed up. Uh, the kids had a load of money, trust fund babies. They're about to get like, you know, $15 million. I mean, a lot of money. And there was an issue with the stock market accounts or the, I forgot it was what, what company it was. And they wouldn't release the money to them. And the reason was, is that they were looking at a specific provision in the trust about distributions and it was missing. And there was a huge paragraph about directing what the company can do for distributions. 
And so the kids were like, what? Like, we can't believe it. We're talking about an estate planning lawyer that practiced law for 35 years, probably did his own trust, like doing own, your own surgery on yourself. And he created the trust. He got it executed, notarized. And, and now we're in a trust administration issue. So now they're hiring us and we have to go in and fix it. So yes, it, if you do all this stuff, sure. It protects you a lot, except for things that aren't considered, people that aren't named, successor trustees that are not named, personal representatives, things that you don't consider. I mean, people don't consider simple things like healthcare surrogates. And if something, somebody goes incompetent, we're power of attorneys. Somebody goes incompetent, they have all of this real estate. I mean, all of it, all the companies and, and nobody's named to help manage it. Now you're talking about a huge proceeding in court called guardianship, and those are expensive. I mean, they're not like $2,500 or $3,000 a pop. Those are really expensive, and, and people don't think about that. You know, you may be 45, and it's just it's a wrongful death case, um, and you have, you have 15 pieces of property people are not thinking about. So, yeah, it protects you, but there's also documents that are not properly drafted that can – pose issues just like deeds if deeds aren't titled right if it if it just says a and b and there's no special magic language the whole thing can be shot um we we have that right now in broward so i mean the the whole issue is title title and drafting is very important no you know pablo your question is great because it gives it it helps everybody understand kind of what's really necessary right now i love al's answer that you know, at, at some point we have to live our lives. And when it comes to the real estate transaction, right, the legal part of this should never stand in the way of acquiring an asset that is a, that, that's right for you, right? Um, and I was just going to share my personal story. You know, when I started, I was 23 years old with my business partners. We were not thinking about asset protection when we started, <laughs> right? We bought about 40 rental properties in the first year and a half. I don't think I ever said the words asset protection, <laughs> right? Um, and we bought those in our personal names. Now we learned about asset protection in the coming years. Uh, I still decided to keep those in my personal name for a period of time because I was comfortable with the risk and I had the insurance and that can be a strategy for some folks out there, right? Some may decide to put in the LLC. But what I have learned over the years is that this conversation is one that I need to have on an annual basis. So I don't know if anybody else out there has sort of their annual conversations that they have, right? It might be with your CPA. It's with your, you know, you go and you get your health care, right? Your, your checkup once a year, right? Um, your financial advisor, if you have one, right? Whatever those is, this type of asset planning conversation for me is now an annual conversation that we have. We start to plan it out. We review what we did in the previous years. We see if anything has changed. And that's, that's the importance of having a teammate like Al there, one phone call away. That's really what you're eventually going to evolve into. For sure. And I appreciate that, Greg, because, you know, we see so many, we have clients that will come in basically every year, right? We'll have ones that change their estate plan probably three times a year. And we're looking at the calendar thinking, you know, is this another change? Is this a codicil to the will? Like, what's the change now? And it's just because there are those types of people out there that think about this all the time. And, you know, we, we live life. So we're not going to think about, you know, death. We're not thinking about, you know, if we lose our faculties in our brain, we're just not there. And, but knowing these tools in advance can help prompt uh, what you do and watching other people's mistakes is more important than going through your own mistake. Cause you can learn what happened to them and think, Oh, I don't want, I saw Sally go through that. I don't want to go through that. Um, so very important to think of LLCs and um, something else people don't think about in the terms of uh, protection and, and uh, estate planning is the very uh, law that we have here in Florida, which is beautiful. It's the homestead law. And, you know, protect creditor protection. Um, it helps protect spouses and minors in, in devices of homestead. Um, and it protects against creditors, even during a probate situation. Help, you know, when you purchase a home, um, I heard about this story when I was working in Miami. They, they were like, if you buy a home, you want to buy a home in unincorporated because then you get more than a half acre of homestead protection. And I was like, what? What is that? So I learned that 
If you live in a municipality and your property is 0.5 acres or under, you have the full Florida creditor homestead protection. Huge estate plan on its own, right? Because you're smart about what size property you purchase. That way you protect your family from any creditors that are going to try to force that sale of that house. But if you live, if you buy a property that's outside, so in the middle of 32221, right out in the middle of nowhere, it could be unincorporated. And now you can buy up to 160 acres of land that could be homestead protected. So knowing simple things like how we have a beautiful law with homestead alone helps you know, people think about preparing for these things next time you buy a house. You know, you always hear about the tax exemptions that you get in the save our homes and saving money on taxes, but um, so many different avenues with estate planning.